The Wage Theft Dango The phones in the call center are open from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. I work a later shift from 11.30 to 8. One week, the following happens. Monday. I clock into my job at 11.30 a.m., do 5 minutes of setup and start taking phone calls from customers by 11.35. I clock out at 8 p.m. that night. Sometime during the day, a memo comes down from corporate, call center representatives should start taking calls the moment their shift is scheduled to start. Tuesday. In order to avoid working off the clock I clock into my job at 11.15 a.m., do 5 minutes of setup, 10 minutes of administrative work, and start taking phone calls from customers at 11.30 a.m., when my shift officially starts. I clock out at 8 p.m., having done 15 minutes of overtime that day. Wednesday. In order to avoid working off the clock I clock into my job at 11.15 a.m., do 5 minutes of setup, 10 minutes of administrative work, and start taking phone calls from customers at 11.30 a.m., when my shift officially starts. Sometime during the day a memo comes down from corporate, overtime is not approved for call center representatives. I clock out early, at 7.45 p.m. in order to avoid doing overtime. Thursday. Starting at 11.25 a.m. I do 5 minutes of setup. I clock in at 11.30 and start taking calls immediately. I stop working at 7.55 but don't clock out yet. I'll be damned if I let corporate make me a victim of wage theft. Over the next 5 minutes a couple of calls from last minute Karens come in. I don't take the calls and at 8 p.m. I clock out. The customers eventually hang up, disappointed. Friday. Starting at 11.25 a.m. I do 5 minutes of setup. I clock in at 11.30 and start taking calls immediately. Sometime during the day my boss comes to talk to me. Boss, when you clocked out at 8 o'clock last night there were still customers waiting in the call queue. Why didn't you take their calls? Me, sorry, boss, my shift ends at 8 o'clock and Vertimi is not a PP Roveda for Ka LLC NT or Re PS. Boss, oh, well, you're allowed to stay late to finish up the customers that call in. Me, sure thing, boss. Can I have that in writing? Later that day a memo comes down from corporate, overtime for business needs is approved for call center representatives. At 7.59 p.m. a last-minute Karen calls in. I help her until 8.05. I clock off 8.15 to make sure I get paid for the extra 10 minutes of work I did. Keep trying corporate, I'm hourly. Sure thing, boss. Can I have that in writing? This is the way. If it isn't written, it was never said. Good for you. Don't let them take your time unpaid. Work means any duties of your job, not just taking calls. A good employee will stay after half an hour to help a client. An intelligent boss will allow them to without punishment. A successful business does not bitch about 30 minutes of overtime. This is how business lose good employees. Treating them like children makes them act accordingly. Call centers are notorious for this attempt at wage theft. Unfortunately for them, at least in the USA, every time it goes to court they lose and are forced to pay up. HTTPS www.reuters.com slash legal slash litigation slash call center worker scan seek overtime booting up computers 20221025 slash https www.linkedin.com slash pulse slash call center wag theft lawsuits rise david philwood even the philippines the call center location of the world has had enough and the employees have started to fight back by creating unions. HTTPS. In these times. Com. Article. Philippine Call Center Workers COVID CWA Unions Corporate Globalization. Excellent. Well played that person. Hands clapping. I had to do the math for my manager to finally get it. To recap yesterday's conversation, you would like us, before the start of our shift, to get the computer logged in, 
and be ready to go available when the clock strikes our start time. That on average, takes about 10 minutes to get logged in and the computer set up in a way where I feel I can give my best to a call. All of this before the start of our shift. And this will be made a metric that our raises will rely on. Here are the numbers. At my company our workday was defined as a 7.5 hour day and will now be 7.67 hours. In the past, if we give part of our day like this, it has been reciprocated back. 10 minutes doesn't seem like much until you look at the numbers. Using those same numbers, that means we would be donating 3.3 hours a month to the company or 39.6 hours a year. That is a full week plus 2.1 hours. Then, this will be made a metric, essentially making our raises dependent on donating a week each year back to the company. The policy was changed before the end of the week. I do like the company I work for though. It's just a new manager that came from a call center background trying to apply his old rules here. Pretty sure setting up is a business need. Can you help customers without making sure things are organized or your equipment isn't ready? Nobody works a job that is onidimensional. On Friday, he gave you the documentation you need to do what you were doing on Monday. This is the person I want training me when I get places. Previous job was from 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Anytime. After that was overtime. Last minute call from the VIPs? Overtime. Conference goes over its scheduled time? Guess what? Overtime. One day of prep that ended at 6 p.m. and got home at 7 p.m. for a two-day conference that also ran over time? Yep you guessed it. Overtime. From end of March 2020 to November 2020 I got so much overtime. But they paid without question. To their credit. Moral of the story, if you are given conflicting instructions, get them in writing. Never work for free. Not even for the time you need to get ready to receive your first call at the start of your shift. I'm pretty sure that the Department of Labor will agree with you. If there was any time that was not paid, you should ask them to pay you. If not, call on your labor department to let them know that an audit may be necessary. I clock off 8.15 to make sure I get paid for the extra 10 minutes of work I did. This can be another form of tricky wage theft. Rounding is allowed, but it has to be the same every time. I'll assume they are rounding to the nearest 15 minutes. Clock in at 8.07? That rounds to 8. Clock in at 8.08? .08? That rounds to 8.15. Those examples are legal, provided you are in the US. But if you clock in at 11.22 am and out at 8.08 .08 pm and they round that to 11.30 and 8 o'clock that's wage theft you can go to the Department of Labor for. Some years back I worked in a call center and way too many employees were allowing the business to steal money from them by doing work off the clock so they could log in at their start time and start calls immediately. I refused to do that and contact the labor board over it. My boss put in writing that I need to clock in at my start time and immediately take calls and any prep work needed to be done off the clock before my start time. Why they put it in writing is beyond me. I could not believe I was handed this on a silver platter lol. After the labor board was contacted a memo came from corporate. All call center employees will log into their phones at the start of their shift in OX 9 for the first 15 minutes to do any prep work. There is to be no work done off the clock. If you are clocked out, you do not work. Many of us received a separate check paying us for time worked off the clock. I think they just did a blanket calculation to all employees to CYA. I also helped several folks not lose pay when they went virtual. The old days of work from home lol. When that call center was shut down. I worked till the end and collected a fat check. Work your wage and know your rights. 
I love it. This is the way. I wouldn't even do the 5 minutes of setup off the clock. If you're there, you should be clocked in. The company I work for pays for startup time that's automatically added prior to IUR morning punch-in. I too work a call center job. Whether they approved overtime or not they still have to pay you for it if you did it. This is why they get mad at you for doing it without permission. Because it's like those people who wash your windshield and then demand payment lol. Without things in writing they should only be able to grumble at you. Or fire you for not following directions or whatever. But they still have to pay you for the overtime. It's creepy when their entire day is devoted to watching over you. Specifically. And you're the one doing the actual work that needs doing. Management is the biggest waste. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Aircast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.